Today we're going to look at section 10.3 and there's really not a whole lot of information in this section. It's really just the conclusion of the regression analysis that we were doing in section 10.2. And our main goal is to learn how to calculate a prediction interval. But before we get to that, let's just jot down some vocabulary quickly regarding how and why the regression line varies from the actual data points on the scatter plot and why that variation might have occurred. And don't worry if you don't fully understand the meaning of the stuff on this page. Um, you'll be asked about it in the homework, but beyond that, it's nothing that you really need to know in order to do the problems. So the total variation is the sum of the squares of the vertical distances. Each point is from the mean. So mathematically, that's sigma of y minus y bar squared. And then the total variation is divided into two different parts. So the first part is the one that's due to the actual relationship between x and y. And then the other part is the part that's due to chance. So the variation that's obtained from the relationship is called the explained variation. Mathematically, that's sigma of y prime minus y bar squared. And then the variation that's due to chance is called the unexplained variation. Okay, and you can see that sigma of y minus y prime squared. And then the total variation is just equal to the sum of the explained variation and the unexplained variation. And you can see the formula for the total variation down there at the bottom. It's just the sum of the other two variations that we talked about. So the first measurement we're going to look at is called the coefficient of determination, and that's the ratio of the explained variation to the total variation. So it's a measure of the uh, variation of the dependent variable that's explained by the regression line and the independent variable. And the important thing to know is the symbol for it. So the coefficient of determination, the symbol is r squared. So if you remember from the last couple sections, we said that r was a value that's always between 0 and 1. And when you square a number that's between 0 and 1, you're always going to end up with another number that's between 0 and 1. So r squared will also be a number between 0 and 1. And if r squared equals 0, then that tells you that the regression line cannot explain any of the variation. And then if r squared equals 1, that means that the regression line explains 100% of the variation in the, in, the, in the dependent variable. Okay, and usually r squared will be somewhere in between 0 and 1, and then you can kind of break it up into the two parts. And then we also have the coefficient of non-determination, and that's found by doing 1 minus r squared. Okay, and that measurement is going to tell you um, the variation that cannot be explained by the variation of the dependent variable. Okay, so let's do an example. So the first one says, using the study found in the previous example, so we're still working with that same example that we've been this entire chapter. I'm actually gonna put the data points back up. Um, if you have your calculator and you wanna put them in your calculator right now, um, that would be a good idea for this section. So it says, find the coefficients of determination and non-determination and explain the meaning of each. Okay, so once you have your values in L1 and L2, all you have to do is go to linear regression t-test, or you could go to linear regression a plus bx. There's a few of these values that are found in like multiple places, so you have some options for where you can go. I usually go to linear regression t-test. And then you'll see in that list of stuff that it tells you right there what r squared is. So if you pull that up, you'll see that r squared, when we round it to three decimal places, same rule as r, um, you get 0.892. Okay, so you just get that value right from your calculator. And what does that mean? Well, that tells us that about 89.2% of the variation in the final grades can be explained by the linear relationship between the number of absences and the final grades. And then we also want to find the coefficient of non-determination. So to do that, it's just 1 minus r squared. 
so 1 minus the 0.892. That comes out to 0 0.108. So if we turn that into a percent, that tells us that about 10.8% of the variation of the final grades cannot be explained by the variation of the absences, which just means that that's the amount that's probably just due to chance. So it's just the way the numbers worked out and the, and the data points were based. And then we have one more measurement before we get to the prediction interval um, that we're going to need for that, and it's called the standard error of the estimate. And the symbol for that is a lowercase s with like an EST subscript. And that's just, uh, it's the measurement that's the standard deviation of the observed y values about the predicted y prime values. Okay, and again, this is just going to be a value that your calculator gives to you. If you go under linear regression t-test, it's the lowercase s that's there. So that's the standard error. Okay, and the closer that the y values are to the predicted y values, um, the standard error gets closer to zero. So the closer to zero, the better for S. So for example two, it says find the standard error of the estimate for the data in the previous example. So just pull up linear regression t-test again. In that same list of stuff, you'll see that there's a lowercase s, and it should say 6.055. So now we're ready to do the prediction interval. So this is just like a confidence interval. We're basically just going to get like a lower bound and an upper bound for what we think a y value will be for a specific x value. So if you can see it's got quite a few steps to it. Um, in step four, you can see the formula that we're going to use. And we are going to have to actually use this formula. There's not a way to do this in your calculator. So I promise I'm not just making us do this like for fun once. Um, you are going to actually have to do this whole process yourself. So before we actually go through the steps for the problem in the example, I just want to give you some notes on where you're going to go in your calculator to get all of these. So for step one, those three values there that it asks you to find, that's going to be found under two variable stats. Step two, when we go to find our y prime, we're just going to plug our x value into the regression equation. Step three, for finding the standard error of the estimate, that's what we just did. So for that, you just go to linear regression t-test. And then when we get to step four, in order to do that formula, we're going to need our t-critical value, which we haven't had to actually use this entire semester yet, um, but now we have to find it. So we're going to get that from the table, and that's why I gave you that table there in your notes. So. We'll use the degrees of freedom and whatever n is, and I'll show you how to get that from your table. It's very easy. Okay, so now let's actually do the example. So example three says find the 90% prediction interval for the final grade of a student with six absences. So we're basically going to predict the lower bound and the upper bound for what we think the, the final grade will be if a student is absent six times. Okay, so step one, we need to get sigma x, sigma x squared, and x bar. All three of those are found under two variable stats. So if you have the data in L1 and L2, just go to two variable stats. So it's right below one variable stats. You'll put, you know, L1 and L2 there, and then it's just going to give you all of these. So for x bar, that's 8.1, and you'll notice that I rounded that. So your rounding rule for x bar is you want to round it to one decimal place. There's several different rounding rules within this problem. And then you'll also see in that list in your calculator, it tells you what sigma x is. So just jot down exactly whatever it has for that. So that's 57. And then sigma x squared is also there. So just jot that down, and that's 579. Okay, step two, we want to get the y prime value for our specific x value. 
So to do that, we just use the regression equation that we found um, in the last section. So we previously had already figured out that our regression equation was y prime equals 102.493 minus 3.622x. And then all we want to do is plug our x value into that. So x it stands for the number of absences. So we're trying to find the final grade for a student with six absences. So x is going to be six. So all we have to do is plug six into the x spot in that equation. And then you'll just calculate whatever that comes out to be. And you should get 80.76. I think it actually comes out to 80.761, like I want to say. Um, but for this, you need to round it to two decimals. So x bar is one decimal place. Y prime is two decimal places. And sigma x and sigma x squared, you just put whatever the calculator has. And then step three, that's to find the standard error of the estimate. So that's what we just did in the previous example. So you just go to linear regression t-test and then just copy down like exactly what it has for the s there. So that was the 6.055. Okay, and then for step four, um, there's a couple other things that we need to get for this formula. So we need to know what n is. So n is just the total number of data values, um, or in our case, the total number of students. So n is going to be 7, because there were 7 students that we had um, data for. And then in order to get the t alpha over 2, we need two things. We need to know the confidence level. So that's the same thing as like the prediction level, so 90%. Okay, it told us that in the question. And then we also need to know the degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom is just found by doing n minus 2. So for our problem, it's going to be 7 minus 2, which is 5. Okay, so we're going to use the 90% and the 5. And we'll go look at that table that's in your notes. And that's going to tell us what our t alpha over 2 value is. So if you pull that table out, you just want to look at the 90% column and then the degrees of freedom of 5 row, find where those numbers meet, and that's 2.015, so that's going to be your t alpha over 2. So 2.015. Okay, now we have everything we need to be able to plug into that formula that's in that box at the top there. So let's do it. So it starts out with y prime. So that was 80.76. And then we minus the t alpha over 2. So minus 2.015. Times that by the standard error of the estimate. So 6.055. And then it's a large square root. And then underneath it, we have 1 plus 1 over n, so 1 plus 1 over 7, plus, and then now I'm up in the numerator of that fraction. So it's n times x minus x bar squared. So for us, it'll be 7 times 6 minus 8.1 squared. And then the denominator is n times sigma x squared minus sigma x quantity squared. So that's going to be 7 times 579 minus 57 squared. And then just right away, because I know I'm going to end up having to put this in my calculator, I'm going to put parentheses around that entire denominator, because that's going to be important when I type this in. Okay, so that is going to give me the lower bound on the y value. And then for the upper bound, it's just the exact same thing. The only thing that changes is that first minus sign is going to become a plus sign. Okay, everything else is exactly the same. Okay, and then the fun part of typing this into your calculator comes in. So for the older calculators, the 83s and some of the 84s, I'm just going to show you how I typed it in. Um, you can try it on your own, see if you get it. If not, 
you know, go back and try to mimic what I have there on the screen. And then for the 84s, I did a video, the newer 84s, I did a video for you guys because it goes off the screen. So I'll let this play and then we'll see what the answer is. If you have your calculator with you right now, I would go ahead, see if you can type this in and get it. Okay, so we got the same answer on both calculators, so that's good. So it's about 67.4999. Um, that's going to be your lower bound number. I didn't do the calculator screens for the upper bound. Um, you literally just type the exact same thing, except that first minus sign, you just want to make it a plus sign. So I'll show you what I get for that, and then you can definitely try it out for yourself. So. For our final answer, um, we get that we can be 90% confident that the interval from 67.50 up to 94.02 contains the actual value of y. And then your final answer, you want to round to two decimal places. So if you're doing these problems on your homework, there's a couple of them, and you can't get the right answer. Just send me a picture of your calculator screen or video and just tell me what number it is in the homework and I can probably find your mistake pretty easy. So if you're frustrated with the calculator stuff, definitely just send me what you have and I can help you out with that. And that's going to be the end of chapter 10, you guys. Good job. Um, we just have one chapter left and there's only two sections in there. so. I'll try to get that posted in the next couple days, and then before you know it, we'll be done.